I entered the all too familiar examination hall, gripping my examination card in my hand. My footsteps echoed as I walked towards the rows of little single desks marked out in lines. 200 other hearts pounded, 200 other pens poised, 200 other dreams hung in the balance. My head was bursting with 20 topics of which only four would be assessed. I had prepared for what seemed like an eternity for this day. Surely there had to be a better way than this. Surely there was a better way to assess our students. I put these thoughts to the back of my mind as I tentatively opened the examination paper. A sigh of relief. My surely psychic teacher had predicted the questions that had come up. I opened the paper, my pen raced across the page, and I began to feel elated. Surely my dream of going to university might just become a reality. I'm sure we all have this experience in common. The exam nerves, the butterflies, the fear of failure, the fear of not remembering everything that we have worked so hard to remember, of all our hopes and dreams being dashed in an all or nothing test. We have all learned things that we will never ever need to know or remember again. And I bet we've all thought, how will these exams prepare us for our dream jobs? My name is Rashin Rice, and I am a teacher and school leader for over 20 years. And during my 20 years experience, I have experienced the great joy and great sadness that that little slip of white paper brings to my students. The months of hard work can be dashed with that little white slip. Don't get me wrong. I am not against examination and testing. It's a necessary rite of passage, one with our students didn't get to achieve this year. There is nothing better than that feeling of pride and achievement when your hard work pays off. The elation, the achievement, it is so good. But what I am advocating for is a radical makeover of our examination and assessment system. And there is no better time to do this than now. Our current system of academic testing suits a particular type of student. The academic student with a good memory and the ability to write succinctly within a given amount of time. It suits the student who knows how to study for the test. The student who has the funds to have extra tuition. And this system unfortunately widens the socio-economic gap. It favours those who can afford a tutor. It favours those who don't have to go to part-time jobs. It favours those who don't have to look after little brothers and sisters. And it favours those who have a room of their own, a desk and a private place to study. We need a much more equitable examination and assessment system. One that focuses on problem solving and real life scenarios and harnesses the power of the new and emerging technologies that are now at our fingertips. Our world has changed, jobs have changed, teaching has changed, but our examination and assessment system remains the same. It is long overdue an overhaul. And this revamp needs to occur not just at secondary level, but across all sectors of education. Why? When was the last time that you were put on the spot to remember something that you studied at school? Most jobs allow for the opportunity to reflect, analyse and research before completing a task. When was the last time that you had to write continuously for two hours using only a pen and paper? So why does our examination system ask our young people to do this? 
Anthony Salcedo, Vice President of Education at Microsoft, remarked that he values the accountability that we need in education, and we need it. But what we need to do is change the way we test and what we teach. Why don't we test not only knowledge, but skills such as leadership, collaboration, creativity and computational thinking? This would be much more relevant to society today, especially when you consider that the Northern Ireland Skills Barometer, commissioned by the Department of the Economy and the survey carried out by the University of Ulster, says that three quarters of all employees lack the confidence that they can get skilled employees. The global pandemic has created an opportunity for us to make this change. It has started a global educational revolution. And for me, two very significant events occurred. The shift to remote learning and the fact that teachers were trusted to create centre assessment grades. Prior to March, the use of technology in education was there and being used, but no one could predict what was going to happen. I look back in those days and with a surreal being, I remember vividly standing at the front of our beautiful assembly hall, informing a group of socially distant teachers on every single aspect of remote learning that I thought that I would have two years to show them how to do this. I will never forget the eerie silence as the teachers got up and raced towards their classrooms to prepare their online lessons. The skill set of the profession has changed. Collaboration on a global and national scale began. Groups like Blend NI and NI Teacher Collaborate began springing up. This was most welcome. The sense of community, collegiality, and collaboration. It was real and we were all working together. Teachers had joined the world of online collaboration. I knew the winds of change had blown when a dear colleague of mine, an outstanding teacher but self-confessed technophobe, came racing towards me in the corridor and said, I've just delivered my first online lesson. You will be so proud of me. For me, this was a watershed moment. I felt we had to look deeper into changing the system for our young people. How we assess work was and is evolving, but now the technology has caught up. Lockdown forced us all to adapt and the possibilities are endless. Of course, there are many issues that need to be addressed, especially with regard to the very deep digital divide in our society. And I know all about that. I'm at the front line. But we need to work with government in order to provide the best opportunities for our young people. And secondly, teachers were trusted to create centre assessment grades and forget the algorithm disaster. Ultimately, the grades that the students received were the ones that the teachers awarded. Now is the time to shake things up. With the advent of new technology, we can create a new fit-for-purpose examination and assessment system. One that assesses the skills of individuals. One that explores problem-solving, reasoning, creativity, and doesn't just favour those blessed with a good memory. John Hattie has said that the coronavirus pandemic, for all its negatives, presented education with its first real opportunity to put educator-led changes in place. Now is the time to change. The examination hall that I went into in 1992 and in 2019 are still the same. A teacher from any point in time would recognise it. Let 2022 be different. Let's change our examination and assessment system for the better so that it is fit for the future and equitable for all. <laughs>